Hi all, um, my name is uh, Ben Grunfeld and this is going to be a tutorial uh, about how to write pretty much the simplest um, React Flux app uh, that you, you can actually create. The main intention of it was really kind of to um, explain the architecture of Flux and uh, you know especially to, to junior programmers who you know maybe struggling with the concepts especially and trying to put it all together in your head. So um, in my repository here, I've uh, created uh, this application. It's just got some easy instructions of how to kind of work through the work through the app. Um, so we're going to uh, grab this app and just do a git clone. Um, then we're going to go into uh, the application itself and just do a quick npm install. And that's going to just tick away and install off all the uh, components we need. And we're going to go and, go and run gulp. Okay. So now we're going to open up uh, all the uh, files that are connected to that and see uh, what it was that we actually just did. So I'll go into here. Open these two guys up. Right, so package.json is what npm uses uh, to uh, download and install uh, all the uh, you know, components that it needs. Uh, it, it grabs gulp to start with, uh, gulp browserify, gulp concat, react, reactify, e6 promise, flux, and object assign. Um, now if we look at, uh, as soon as you run the npm install, um, all of these things um, you know, will will be installed by npm. Is that, that's what you can see, you know, happening up here. Now, when you run gulp, um, it's then going to go and use those uh, those components that are downloaded and installed. So here, it just grabs uh, all the stuff that it needs: uh, gulp, browserify, and concat. Um, and then it uh, runs the browserify task. So it grabs as its source source JS main JS. Um, then it compiles that. Um, so it compiles the code. Uh, concatenates, concatenates it all together into one file called main.js and then um, uh, places it in the uh, distribution file in the JS folder uh, and distribution folder in the JS folder. Uh, then what it does is it goes and copies uh, source index uh, and then puts it in that distribution folder um, uh, as well uh, and then just goes and runs both of those and also gives us this like kind of watch task if we wanted to like you know just develop a you know one piece at a time and just see that it'll just run run this whole uh, gulp task you know every time a, a file gets changed hi right, so let's let's go and jump into the code uh, we're going to open up uh, source uh, index.html and now I'm just going to go ahead and, and just quickly open up uh, all the files that were really uh, kind of involved in the app Bear with me for a sec. And as you can see here, uh, just from all the different folders, the uh, the module. Uh, modularized approach to, to, of course, like React and Flux. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Uh, this is a React and Flux application, so it just uses the most like simple uh, pieces of both just to create like one uh, very streamlined application that just goes through all of the motions. So the main the main part to see um, here in um, uh, in the index.html file is that you create a div, uh, it's got an ID of main class container uh, and then it just runs this script which is uh, JS, main.js. Uh, so what happens is uh, the main.js uh, grabs react and also grabs uh, components uh, app.js and then uh, these are the two files that it needs. 
and then what it does is it takes this this app tag, um, fills it out with all the stuff that that happens with React and uh, and of course Flux, and then switches it for um, that uh, div with the ID of main. So it just it, it switches these things out. Um, I'm sure you've you've read about it already, but uh, React uh, Smart Render uh, basically you know, if it, it has this thing called a virtual DOM, so it creates all, does all the changes that it needs. And so you've got a hundred lines of HTML that need to get uh, rendered to the page. So it'll render them the first time, but the second time, if you've only changed three of those lines of three of those hundred lines of HTML, it's not going to go and re-render the whole 100 lines. It's only going to like it's basically it does a diff between the virtual DOM and the uh, the, the target page, and it only switches out the stuff that's different. So in 100 lines of HTML, it's only going to switch out three lines if you know if those three lines are different. Um, okay, so so it does that, that 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 render and swaps these two guys out, and so now we're going to look at like what's the functionality of like what went on in the in the background. So it's components app.js. So here we can see here. Um, firstly, there's a, a couple of import statements. Uh, grabs app actions and app store, um, and then uh, we do this thing called create class, which uh, is basically a way of creating a component in uh, in React. Uh, we set up a handle click function, uh, which just fires off an action, and we're going to talk about that in a second. And then you've got your render method, and the render method returns uh, a simple div. Um, it, ha it has a class name, and all it's got inside of it is an H3 tag uh, with an on click event, uh, and it'll fire that handle click uh, event, the handle click function, if it gets clicked. And then inside you've just got a bit of text. Um, so basically, it just uh, r render renders that. So what's this action thing? This action thing is basically kind of like a a fire and forget um, a tool. It basically says, I, "I'm doing this. Here's a little bit of data. Um, uh, I'm just uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this." So this app actions, which we imported up here, goes to uh, the app actions uh, file. Uh, and then we can see we have this add item function. So here we said app actions dot add item. So here app actions add item, and then it takes um, this you know where it says here in this text like this is the item. So it takes that as the parameter of the function, and then what it does is it uh, invokes the app dispatcher handle handle action view function. Um, it wraps the uh, the item inside of an object. So this is an object here that I'm highlighting. So it gives it a bit of context, which is app constants dot add item, and then you've got that that item there. So that um, this is the item is now we came in as the parameter, and then you know got put got got put in there. Um, now what's this um, uh, this context? So this context uh, all we've done is app constants dot dot add item. And here we can see um, that's uh, that's the value that, that's that's being used. So it basically says uh, app app dispatcher handle view action. And over here uh, we're now in the app dispatcher uh, uh, file. And you can see app dispatcher handle view action. So once again, just for for, for clarity, app dispatcher dot handle view action. Here we are app app dispatcher uh, dot handle view action. It takes that object that we uh, sent it, we wrapped it up in an object, right? So it takes that as a parameter and uh, wraps it again in its own object. So it does that kind of twice. It gives it, a, once again, gives it again its own uh, uh, context. So this, uh, this here we can see it's a view action and with the, uh, the payload is in, inside of action. And then uh, basically just broadcasts it. So what does it? What does a, a an app a dispatcher do? A dispatcher is pretty much a broadcasting method. It basically says anyone who's listening, I'm doing this, and here's some data. So it's, in in some ways it's quite a simple. It's, it's quite the same thing as the as as an action, except it's much more of a broadcasting method. The action kind of targets the dispatcher, and the dispatcher targets anyone who's listening. So who's listening? The store is listening. The store is basically um, a whole set of functionality 
that um, is connected to uh, one, comp uh, one component and uh, it allows you to do a, a whole bunch of stuff. So it's really the, the functionality of a component. So what it does here is um, is we've got uh, at, at the store itself. We define the store. Um, of course, we, sorry, we uh, we of course uh, import all of the files that kind of uh, deal with it. We deal. Uh, we import the dispatcher. We import nodes event emitter, uh, which we will uh, use uh, later on, and we import the constants as well. And of course, we we import uh, object assign. So we just define. Uh, a constant as uh, change for the change event um, and then we uh, define the store we assign the event emitter uh, to it so it can use that uh, emit uh, the, that emit function so here we've got our um, emit change function and all it does is it emits a change event and if anything is listening uh, especially uh, something uh, in the in the react view so if you had something um, here that was listening um, it'll it, it'll pick it up especially you need to import it of course so we now get to the really important stuff the store here registers to that app dispatcher so this guy over here is app dispatcher and here uh, the store has registered to it and it takes a payload now what's the payload that it takes? This object here that we, we, we wrapped up, right, with, that has the context and the payload itself, it takes that as the payload, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say just console log, log the payload, and then return true. And return true we do because there's an issue of uh, promises here. So what does this look like? I'm now gonna open up Um, this index.html file in the distribution folder and I'm going to open up uh, Chrome DevTools' console so we can see the uh, console.log statement and basically as soon as I click uh, this title an object is going to basically be put into the console and I can click it again and again and again it does the same thing. We can see in the object it has source view action, there's our context. If you look into it, uh, item, this is the item. So what's happened here, I'm just gonna go over it all again. Um, in the index.html, uh, we have a div that has been, uh, that gets switched out um, uh, by React. So it just switches out that div uh, with the app component. Here inside of the app component, um, it renders a, uh, a div with an h3 that has an on click which is uh, the, uh, the, that fires this handle click function and here we can see that that um, uh, click uh, event is, is working quite nicely uh, every time you click it um, what it does is it shoots out an action that has this is the item as a payload that fires this um, uh, this action over here that has add item and it just wraps up that payload um, inside of an object that has um, a, a some context uh, attached to it, um, that then goes to that then uh, triggers the app dispatcher, which uh, takes that as a the, that payload again, wraps it in an object, um, gives it its own context, and then just broadcasts it. And anyone who's listening can then listen to that. Also, notice how we've said like handle view action. We could also have like a handle server action uh, function as well, just to differentiate between. And we're also giving it some context for you know functionality functionality later on to just discern, you know, like what's kind of like what's going on and how we should react. Then the app store has uh, registered uh, to that app dispatcher. So when the action gets uh, when the app dispatcher uh, broadcasts, it'll be listening, and then it takes uh, that object as a as a parameter um, here inside of as payload and then all it does is it just logs it to the console and returns true so that is um, we can clear the console and just have a look at it again that is exactly what's happening well I, I hope this has helped kind of clear up the practicality of 
of using Flux as uh, as an architecture. I think it's an absolutely fantastic architecture that, when once understood, gives uh, quite a lot of uh, you know ease of use and, and is quite intuitive. I just think that uh, that it needs a little bit of uh, explaining to be uh, understood well. So I, I hope this helped. Um, all the uh, code um, is on GitHub. Um, you can just find it at you know github.com slash Ben Grunfeld slash React Flux Simple App. You can see it up here. And uh, yeah, give me a buzz if you need any help. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter at, uh, at, at Ben Grunfeld, and I'd uh, love to help you out. Have a good one.